Word has it that a solar superstorm is coming. Everybody, duck! Hey everybody, I'm Lacey Green. Welcome to DNews. Scientists in the UK are strongly pushing the government to prepare for an inevitable once-in-a-century solar superstorm. A solar superstorm sounds friggin' scary, but don't get too crazy. It's not super mega death everywhere scary, just a little wow, I'm really dependent on electricity, sort of scary. This kind of storm is deadly if you're an astronaut in space, but down on Earth, it can knock out satellites, which can disrupt aircraft and GPS. It can also leave you sitting in the dark and without crucial technology for a while. Geological studies done in 2000 determined that worst case scenarios had the potential to bring a developed nation to its knees for several years, mostly because of the destruction of multiple huge systems all at once. On the plus side, you'll have a really awesome light show to look at, in the sky for a few days, just like your grandparents did before the internet controlled everybody's lives. Experts are saying that the type of solar superstorm that they're concerned about is a coronal mass ejection, which I guess is a pretty fitting name because it's basically when the sun ejaculates all over the Earth. But instead of semen, it's huge clouds of charged solar plasma that can move at a speed of 3 million miles per hour or more. The cloud is brewed up by solar flares and radiation storms on the sun's surface. For the coronal mass ejection to hit Earth, it usually takes three to four days, but there was was one big storm in 1859 which only took about 17 hours. During the Carrington event, aurorae were seen all over the earth. It was so bright that people thought it was morning. Telegraph systems all over America and Europe failed and some even caught on fire. Telegraph systems? Okay, yeah, that is some old school shit. The world people lived in in 1859 was so different than 2013. Society didn't depend on technology to make the world spin, which does mean that the destructive potential of a solar storm is higher now. Of course, the good news is that it still doesn't directly kill people. Just hope you're not in the hospital at the time. We do have a janky little warning system up there though. There's an aging satellite called Advanced Composition Explorer, or ACE, which, if it actually works, will give about 15 minutes warning if we're going to be ejected on. In 2014, NASA will be replacing it with another system called Discover. But a 15 minute warning is not enough time to prepare. To prepare for a solar storm on a personal level, all of the normal disaster stuff applies. Having food storage, water storage, first aid kits are never a bad idea. As a society, we could just stop using computers and cell phones, electronic money, lighting, GPS. For some reason, you know, I just don't think that's gonna happen. So, since we don't really know when the solar storm will happen, it's probably a good idea for national leaders to get on top of preventative technologies, which do exist. The problem is this sort of thing never feels imminent because it is fairly rare, which means it ends up being ignored. But then when it does happen, and it will, eventually, what could have been a few hours of disaster becomes weeks or months of disaster, which is probably why scientists are saying, okay, we need to do this now. All right, guys, thank you for watching DNews. Make sure you subscribe for more, and we'll see you again soon.